hi guys welcome back to my channel today's video is going to be on how i made this bustier dress with yolk so if you're interested in the video please keep on watching i have gone ahead to mark out significant lines on my pattern paper if you don't know how to draft the basic bodies i'll put a link to the video in the description box so right here from the start point i would go ahead and mark six and a half inches downwards after marking the point like this, I would go ahead and connect the lines together. After my waistline, I have gone ahead to add half inch seam allowance right there. And I would mark 0.75 inch on both sides of my bust pan line at my waistline. And then I would mark 1 inch on both sides of my bust pan line at my underboss. And then I would mark 1 inch below my bust point and I'll connect the lines together. At my chest line, I'll go ahead and mark a quarter of my bust circumference and I'll add one inch to that. After that, I'll go ahead and create my armhole curve. At my waistline, I would measure what I have from the center of my paper to my first dart line. Whatever I have, I'll place it on the second dart line and mark a quarter of my waist circumference and then I'll add one inch side seam allowance. I would mark one inch above my bust point in a slanted manner. After that, I would make a connection from one inch below my bust point to one inch above my bust point and then to my mid armhole like this. After that, at my mid armhole, I would measure one inch of that below it and then I would place my ruler like this and make a connection from that point to one inch below my bust point. At this point where I took a dart of one inch, I would make an extension of that one inch of that right there. This is so as to create a new armhole curve so that we are not short of measurement. So I'm just going to extend the line like this and create the new armhole from this point to that point at my chest line. Right here, I'll go ahead and mark out my bust dart of one inch right there below my bust point line. After that, I will go ahead and cut open my bust pan line all the way to one inch below my bust point line and then I would close the darts. And to prevent the darts from moving, I would use my paper tape to seal off that area. Once that is done, I would go ahead and close this my armhole dart right here. So I'm just going to pick up that first line, smoothing it out like this and place it over the new armhole line that I created. This is so as to create a new armhole curve as you can see. So once that is done, I would use my paper tape to seal off that area too. And after that, I would use my marker to reconnect the lines. As you can see, a new armhole curve has been formed. Right here on my chest line, I would go ahead and mark again a quarter of my bust circumference you can see that the initial mark uh, moved because I closed the dart so I'll go ahead and add one inside seam allowance to that point and then I'll reconnect the lines right here you can see that the line also moved while closing the dots so I'll go ahead and mark out the line again for the neck depth for my main bodies I would mark half inch above my chest line like this. After that, I would mark 0.75 inch inwards from the center of my paper. I'll extend the line. Then from this point, I'll make a connection to this point right here. 
in case I didn't mention this before, the neck width that I'm working with is 4 inches. So from my neck width right here, I will make a straight connection all the way to that point right there. So I'll go ahead and label this part as the front yoke. After that, I would go ahead and cut out the front yoke. So while cutting out the front yoke, notice that I'm not cutting the yoke all the way to the center front right there at my chest line. Rather, I'm cutting it all the way to that point right there. After cutting out the yoke, I'll go ahead and cut out the rest of the pattern for the front bodies. I will go ahead and cut out the darts right there on both sides. Once I'm done, I'll cut out my side seam like this and then I'll cut out the rest of my armhole. After that, I'll cut out the rest of the pattern like this. After cutting, I would use an arrow sign to indicate the areas where I'll be adding half an inch seam allowance while cutting on my fabric. So for the front yoke, I'll be cutting out four pieces of it. On this part of my front pattern, I'll be cutting it on fold and I'll be cutting out just one piece. I will cut out two pieces on this part. For the back, I first went ahead to mark out my waist dart and then I marked out a quarter of my waist circumference plus one inside seam allowance. Then I also did the same thing right there on my chest line. The neck width for the back just like the front is 4 inches. So I am here to add a zipper allowance right here at the back of my pattern. So I'll go ahead and indicate that so that while cutting on my fabric I don't forget. So I'll be adding 1 inch zipper allowance at the back. So I'll go ahead and mark 6.5 inches right there from the start point and I'll connect the lines together. To create the neck depth for my back hook, I will go ahead and make a connection from my neck width to that point right there. And for the neck depth for the main bodies for the back, I would mark 1 inch below my chest line and make a connection from here to that point. I will label this part as the back hook and I will also indicate my zipper allowance at this area. Next, I'll go ahead and cut out my back yoke. After that, I would go ahead and extend my dart line all the way to the edge of my paper like this and I'll cut out the back dart. I'll use an arrow sign to indicate the areas I'll be adding having similar ones while cutting on my fabric. So like the front, I'll be cutting out 4 pieces of my back yoke. I will cut out 2 pieces of this part of my back pattern. And I'll also do the same thing for this one too. So here are all the pattern pieces that I need for both the front and back bodies. I'll be using the basic sleeve pattern that I drafted in my sleeve pattern video. So if you haven't watched it, I'll put the link to the video in the description box. I'll be attaching a pencil skirt to the waistline of my bodies. So I'll go ahead and cut out my skirt from this fabric. I'll be using this two nets to cut out the yoke for both the front and the back. And I'll also cut out my sleeves too from this net. So right here are the fabric pieces for the front and the back. So I'll go ahead and join them together by the sides. So right here I have joined them together. Next, I'll be using this red bias to create boning channels. This part is optional. You don't have to do it. So I will place the bias on the seam line on the back right there. And I'll stitch close to the edge of the bias. 
like this. So after that, I will also place it across the armhole down to the waistline of the back and also stitch. For the front, I will place the bias along the center like this and also stitch it close to the edge. I will also place it along the seam line on the bust area like so and also across the armhole to the waistline. So I will repeat the same thing on the other seam line and also the other armhole. So I'm done. I decided to add an extra bias right there at the back. This is my sleeve. Like I said, I will be cutting out the sleeve with the net. So I cut out two pieces for my sleeve. For the front yoke, to finish the neckline, I would go ahead and place them together like this, side by side. And then I will stitch them together by a half inch seam allowance. Right here, after stitching the yoke, I went ahead to trim off the excess seam allowance and give the neckline a good press. Now remember that the yoke stops 0.75 inch from the center front of the bodice like this. So I'll go ahead and place the yoke on that point. Note how I'm placing the yoke. You can see that there's an extension right there. So make sure you do it this way so that you have a perfect fit. So I'll go ahead and attach it on the armhole area like this. I'll also attach the second yoke the same way on the other parts of the bodice like this. Make sure you extend the edge of the yoke so that when you're sewing it matches up. Next I'll place the lining of the front like this, pin it up and sew the neckline together by a half inch seam allowance. So after sewing I went ahead to give the neckline a good press. As you can see, it's looking all nice and flat. So I'll be making use of this plastic boning for the boning channels. So I'll place it this way and measure. Note that the boning will not get into the seam line at the waistline. So I'll cut off what I need like this. Then I would make sure that I trim the edge of the boning well so that it doesn't poke me. Once I'm done trimming the edge of the boning, I'll go ahead and insert it this way, all the way to the neckline area. So as you can see, the boning did not get to the waistline area. So I'll also go ahead and measure what I need right here at the seam line of the bust area, cut it off, trim off the edges, the both sides, okay? Make sure you do that. And once I'm done, I'm going to insert it like this. So because this is the bust area and it has curve around that area, it was a struggle. I was literally fighting with the bodies. So I'm done with that part. So I'll go ahead and insert the boning into the rest of the channels. To finish the neckline of the back yoke, I will also go ahead and place them together good size to good size just like I did for the front and then I would sew them together along the neckline area by half an inch seam allowance. So right here I'm done sewing it and I decided to give the neckline a good press. I'll secure both the bodice and the yoke together with my pins like this. Then I'll place the lining of the back along the neckline. I'll also do it on the second part of the bodies, then I'll sew the neckline together by half an inch seam allowance. So right here I am done and I gave the neckline a good press. So guys I have gone ahead to cut out my skirt. If you don't know how to cut the basic skirt, I'll put the link to the video in the description box so you can check it out. So this is my front skirt and my skirt is about 50 inches long with one and a half inch hemming allowance. So for the front part of the skirt, I won't be sewing a dart right here, okay? And the lining of the front skirt, both the front and the back skirt, ends at 4 inches above my knee line. I'll be sewing a dart at the back of my skirt and lining, so I've gone ahead to mark the dart, and the dart stops 4 inches above my hip line. For the front skirt, I would place the basic bodice, right there at the center front and pin together. 
I will also place the skirt of the lining together with the bodies of the lining, pin them together and I will sew the waistline area of both the lining and the main bodies by half an inch. After sewing the waistline together, I secured the lining to the main dress with my pins. So this is what the front looks like. And I also went ahead to sew the waistline of the back as you can see right here. So now it's time to fix my zipper. I would place the two parts of the back together like this. Good sides to good sides. This area is the zipper allowance line. So I would secure the two pieces of the back at the point where my lining ends. That is four inches above my knee line. So I will secure them together with my pin and I would mark two and a half inches from my hip line at my zipper allowance area like this and I'll also secure that point with my pin. So I would go ahead and make a straight stitch from this point all the way to this point that I marked just now. After that I would go ahead and open the back like this then I would place my zipper this way below that point that I mark right there. So it's about one and a half inch below that point. So I'll just mark it right there. So from this point, I would go ahead and start sewing my zipper by one inch all the way to the yoke of the back. I have gone ahead to attach my zipper as you can see right here. Then I'll place both the front and back together like this. I'll secure the shoulders of both the front and back together with my pins. After that, I would sew the shoulder area by half an inch. So guys, after sewing the shoulders together, I went ahead to fix my sleeves. After that, I also trimmed off the excess seam allowance around the armhole area so it's not too much on the outside. So I'll be sewing the side seams together like this by one inch. But first, I would start from the sleeve seam line. Yeah, the side seam line. I will sew all the way to the hem of the dress by one inch. After sewing the side seams, I went ahead to give it a good press, as you can see. I also went ahead to finish the hem of the dress. I had a hem allowance of one and a half inches, so all I did was to fold it twice and stitch it. At this point, I realized that the waistline of the dress looks so plain and boring. So I decided to make use of this silver embellishment right here. So I'll place it along the waistline like this from the front to the back. I would attach it using my Uhu glue right here. So I'm just going to put a portion of the glue on this part of the embellishment and place it on the waistline. So to attach the embellishment, I've gone ahead to open the waistline. So from this part of the zipper, I would attach it all the way across the front to the other part of the zipper like this so guys as you can see at this point the embellishment did not get into the zipper so that i can zip up the dress so this is how the front looks like so now that the waistline is no longer boring i'll go ahead and try on the dress and show you guys how it looks like on me here is how the dress looks like on me i am just in love with the fitting of the dress just look at that this is the back view of the dress right here. So if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys.